All right, to get started servicing the Ninja Reg, the first thing you want to make sure is that there's no air in your bottle. Even though the gauge says zero on this, um, gauges do fail occasionally. So what you want to do is take a small Allen key. This is the 532nd. And you just want to press the pin on the top here. You really want to make sure that this is completely pressed down, no air comes out, nothing at all, to make sure that your regulator is completely empty. Um, this is a pretty much a foolproof way. There could still be a little bit of air, so if for some reason you start to take apart the regulator, the very first thing you want to do is just stop what you're doing immediately and then double check to make sure their air is taken out of the bottle. Um, if you do not feel comfortable for any reason servicing your air tank or your regulator, don't do it. There's no reason to take it to your local shop, take it to your local field, uh, make sure you don't do anything you don't feel comfortable with. So again, make sure the gauge completely says zero and make sure you press the pin down on the top of it. Make sure that there's no air at all comes out before you start servicing your regulator. Okay, so first what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna clean the, the threads here on a bottle. You wanna take a rag, you don't ever wanna do this to your hand. This is gonna be pretty sharp on the top here. So you wanna make sure you just clean that off and you're just wiping down the outside of it there. And then on a Ninja regulator, there are two set screws. One here and one on the op complete opposite side there. You wanna go ahead and take those out. Let's see what size that is going to be. That looks like a 332nd, I believe. Okay, so I'm gonna take the short end of it because I don't wanna round any of this off. Uh, my kit has the round head on there, so if these were difficult to unscrew, I don't wanna break anything or strip anything out. So once I loosen them up, then I can use the easier side or the ball head side. It's gonna be two small little Allen or two small set screws. Go ahead and pull that out. And then I'm gonna take my hand here and just grab it and just go ahead and unscrew it. Sometimes this can be kind of difficult. Um, if it's extremely hard, again, be careful. There might still be air in your regulator. Otherwise, it should spin pretty easy. Okay, so as I'm unscrewing here, there's gonna be some pieces inside that might fall out. So screw it all, unscrew it all the way. <clears throat> You want to make sure you work in a clean environment. That way, if anything falls out, you know what, what fell out. Okay, so inside your Ninja Regulator, you're going to have, we have the two set screws. We have what we call your bonnet. And then inside of the, the base of the regulator, you're going to have a few shims. The shims in this regulator are used to adjust to fine tune the pressure on your regulator. On this one here, this is one of our metallic 68 light bottles. So this is part of our collab group. This is a group of select dealers throughout the world, uh, mainly the, in the US and Europe, that uh, go together, work together to make a limited edition type products. So this is one of our metallics. It's kind of a cool purple color. So again, on the inside of this, you have three shims. Uh, this, this comes preset from the factory. I wanna say 800 PSI roughly. Um, your manual, your piece of paper manual inside of each Ninja bottle and regulator uh, will explain to you what pressure it comes set at. But if you do want to lower your pressure, we'll make another video on that. But you, you basically remove and adjust these regular these shims here. Okay, so we have the shims. That's everything that's going to be in the base of the regulator. And then on the top of the bonnet, you're going to have, and I'm just wiggling this forward and backwards. You don't want to really grab pliers or any of this. You don't want to damage this area at all. I'm going to go ahead and pull this out. So we have your bonnet here, which has the two O-rings on it. And then there's a small O-ring on the inside of it. Then you're gonna have your reg pin. It's gonna have a, or like reg, not piston, but your pin with a pin spring. And then of course you have your main uh, main piston here and then your main regulator spring here. Okay, so to clean and service it, you basically just wanna clean everything, wipe everything down. This is a brand new regulator. As, so as you can tell, there's a lot of grease on here already. I'm gonna go ahead and wipe it down real well with a lint-free rag. Or if it's not lint-free, make sure you get any of the lint off of it. So regulators are pretty simple. A lot of people are scared of them, which I think you kind of should be. be. Definitely be careful when you're working on stuff like this. Uh, if you really want to be safe, make sure you wear some safety glasses when you're working with air tanks. If for some reason, there's still air in the bottle. You don't want any dirt or anything to fly into your eye. Uh, so I definitely recommend to wear safety glasses. I do have a couple Q-tips here, and I'm going to clean the inside of the regulator. So I wipe down the piston. This is the most, uh, this is the part that moves every single time you fire the gun. So this part gets worn out. The bottom here is your regulator seat. If this gets damaged because of debris, it'll cause leaks inside the gun, or sorry, it'll cause leaks inside your regulator and overpressurizing in your regulator. <clears throat> so this part here, your regulator piston, this part moves every single time you fire the gun. 
This is what gets your most wear and tear on it. This is what will cause the leaks if it gets damaged. Uh, on the bottom here is your regulator seat, so you wanna make sure you keep this very clean. If debris gets inside your regulator and damage, damages the regulator seat, this is when you get a blown burst disc or a safety disc that's blown. So I'm gonna take a Q-tip and at the very bottom of this regulator housing here, I'm going to just clean the sides of it out because again, you wanna make sure there's no debris to damage that piston. So I'm gonna clean all the way in the bottom of it. There's like a little nipple piece in the bottom with a small hole in it. Clean that out and then I'm gonna clean around the edges here, all the way around. And you see there's a little bit of green or like dirt in there. This is a brand new rig, so it's not dirt. It's just, just grease and whatnot. But this is where you'll see all the dirt inside there. So get all that out. Again, we've cleaned the piston there. And then inside your bonnet, the bonnet is here at the top. There's also, you wanna make sure that everything isn't clean inside of this part. So you, sometimes you can get metal shavings inside of here. Uh, that can get inside of your regulator. So again, you don't wanna use your finger to clean the inside of it. These are gonna be, sometimes they're gonna be brand new, like on brand new threads. Uh, so sometimes uh, there'll be threads like so sometimes there'll be metal shavings on the inside of your bonnet, uh, because especially like on a brand new regulator. So you don't wanna use your finger, it's gonna tear up your finger pretty bad. So you wanna go ahead and take your Q-tip, I'm gonna press it to against the side, and I'm gonna clean it all the way in the top of the regulator around that O-ring. If for some reason you ever get a leak out the top of your regulator, out the top here around that pin, what that is gonna be is gonna be either this part is damaged, so that your, the pin is actually scratched around the edges, or this little white O-ring, see if I can get it out. This white O-ring is damaged. So this O-ring sits around just like that and it has to seal. So if for some reason the O-ring is damaged or this pin is damaged, it won't seal and you'll get a leak out the top of your regulator. So again, I'm gonna take this, just cleaning out the inside of it. Be careful of those sharp threads. And I'm gonna take, I don't usually recommend you don't have to take this uh, this o-ring out but i did it just to show you if you do take it out of course you want to be careful not to damage it so i'm going to take a larger allen key that has like a little round head on the top of it i'm going to press down to kind of get it to snap into place there we go so it clicks into place it is a very specific o-ring so don't just throw any o-ring in there okay so we've cleaned the bottom of the regulator we've cleaned the piston off we've wiped down the pin. Your spring, you can wipe it down if it has a debris, has any debris on it or dirt. Just wipe that down real well. Um, I typically use, and I've never been told this is wrong, this is what we've always used, um, a little Dow 33 grease. So if you have a Planet Eclipse gun uh, or a die gun and you have this white grease, just put a little on your finger there and put it on these O-rings. Just a small coat where you can see it. You don't want to overdo it. Good to go there. And you don't want to lube. You don't want to put any grease on the bottom piece here. On the bottom of your of the piston, you don't want to put any lube on there. Okay, and those are the only two parts I really recommend to to grease up. You can put a little on the threads. So again, be careful because they are sharp. You can put a little on the threading here, which will kind of make uh, it'll make the, the bonnet go on easier. So sometimes debris and dirt and everything get in there um, and it can really mess up your thread. So if you take good care of them and keep them clean and put a little grease on them, it'll kind of help everything go together better but again these are very sharp inside of here so you want to be real careful on that so just to show you how everything goes back together outside of the regulator so you have your piston spring you have your piston you have your pin spring and your pin and you have your bonnet so this is how it sits inside of the regulator so just like this with this piece on top and then whenever you air it up this piece has pressure against it here and so when you press down on that pin it allows air to come out Okay, and now that you have everything clean, you wanna go ahead and put the regulator shims back into place, and it does not matter the order. You don't have to force them down, just drop them into place. Then you take your regulator piston spring, drop that in there. Then your regulator piston, drop that in there. And then I would recommend go ahead and take your pin and pin spring, set it right there, and you wanna aim the bottle directly up and down. If you try to do it to the side like that, the pin wants to fall to the side, but if you hold it straight up and down, and just take your bonnet and drop it right on top, everything will line itself up. Some people will try to do it upside down. What happens if you do it like this and try to tip it over, everything wants to fall out. So you don't wanna do it that way. If you do it sideways, again, it kind of binds itself up inside. So what I recommend is just hold it just like this vertically, take your bonnet, drop it right down on the top of it here, and everything should just go right together and line itself up. And if it doesn't, you'll see that the pin won't come through the hole. Right now you can see clearly the pin is coming through perfect. 
and you're all set, good to go. So hand tighten it up, and then don't forget your set screws on the side. So it's pretty straightforward. Again, if your piston on the inside is damaged for any reason, uh, you do want to replace that. You can blow a burst disc, your bottle will overpressurize. Uh, so if you do want to, uh, if you've had your bottle, let's say a year, and you haven't ever serviced it, it might be time to purchase a rebuild kit for it. Or maybe, you know, if you've had it longer than a year, definitely recommend purchasing a rebuild kit for it. Of course, you can find those on our website, prohpb.com. And go ahead and replace the piston, lube it, clean it, make sure everything's good to go. But if everything looks good in there, uh, you should be good. Just service it, clean it if you have any problems. If you are in Houston, make sure you bring it by to us. We can test the output pressure and make sure that the pressure is staying steady. If the pressure is staying steady, that means everything is working correctly. If for some reason that pressure is slowly spiking or we call creeping, uh, that means it's not sealing correctly inside. Something's worn out or damaged on the inside and it's slowly causing the pressure to increase, which will slowly cause, basically after a while, the burst disc will blow um, and you'll replace the inside anyway. So if you guys have any questions about servicing your Ninja Regs or any, any regulator at all, uh, stop by our store or you can comment below if you have any questions. Otherwise, thank you guys so much for watching. If you found value in our video, please go ahead and take a second and like the video. And if you like tech videos and review videos, subscribe to our channel. Thank you guys for watching.